Hi everyone and welcome to my tutorial on how I painted my Grim Dark Psychophage. Uh, since I got the box set I've been so excited to paint this one and to say how big it is, I painted it surprisingly quick, which is why we sort of not speed through the tutorial, uh, but you know it was quite an enjoyable miniature to paint and to how big it was you think it would take a long time. Uh, however, uh, it was such a, a joy to paint and we've got a lot of different hints, tips and techniques to get through. So uh, enjoy and if you do like it, hit that thumbs up button. So the first thing that we're going to do before we do anything is prep our mini before we even prime it. Here I've used on the carapace a mix of Crackle Paint and Valhallen Blizzard. This just adds a little bit of fun texture and variation to the miniature and can also seal up some mold lines. I start off with a surface primer of Israeli sand. Uh, the reason I do this, you can use wraith bone, anything like that, is because this is going to be the basis of which our skin tones and colour are going to be. But because we're starting with like this flesh tone, we're going to get our Karaberg Crimson. You can apply this via brush or airbrush. And you're just going to work your way around the miniature. I do this to like the, especially with this one, like the, the mouth area um, and joints and stuff. And any places where like it's underside or it's got these like little pustule things coming out of its back end uh, and around the carapace. Now you can give this like a, a little second coat. This all depends on how, you know, like dark and rich uh, you want some of that, that, that red to be. Now using a mix of Burnt Umber and Bulwark Brown, using the Bulwark Brown first and darkening it up, we're going to start to add a little bit of variation to that skin tone, just so it's not pure like the bleach and we just want to add some shadows and what I started doing is working my way down towards its claws and carapace uh, and building it up to the, to the Burnt Umber. Uh, and this is just gonna, and you can use different colours for this if you want it like to look a bit more green or or red or whatever purples, anything like that. You can just choose those colours. Um, but again, it's just spraying upwards. And one thing I wish I'd have done with this miniature were uh, actually not glued it to the base so I could get to the underside. Uh, now, once we've done that, I've just got a little bit of a black in the airbrush. There's no specific paint for this, just any black will do because my carapace is going to be black. We're going to start to spray up and add to uh, those transitions that we've already done and as you can see at top i'm starting to build up the black on the carapace now the reason i leave it a little bit patchy is again to add to some of that variation so there'll be different like shades of blacks and tones going under it and because we've put a tiny little bit of brown towards bottom it just helps create those transitions and it's not just one boring color if you look at bugs and stuff they've got quite a little bit of different color variations to their bodies now one last finishing touch i've got the contrast paint sigvald burgundy and i'm just adding that into the mouth and around some of those really fleshy areas uh, this is going to come uh, helpful a little bit later on so when we paint the mouth now once we've done that we're going to use our trusty old streak and grime this is the last phase i do with the airbrush again you don't have to do this with an airbrush for the streak and grime but i just I just did it with it because it was such a big miniature and i wanted to get it done pretty quick but i literally spray this all over the mini uh, and then we'll go into our trusty removal process with uh, some cotton like swabs these like makeup sponges um, and they're really really good uh, these are my new thing i don't use cotton buds anymore i uh, just go straight to these uh, once you've given that a few minutes to dry i uh, start to uh, wipe it off nice and gentle because i've not applied any sort of uh, varnish or anything to that with a little bowl of mineral spirits and just work your way around the miniature removing that so that it leaves all the streak and grime into the crevices and it will tint the skin a little bit more to this like dingy horrible grimy color now at this point this is what your mini should look something like i have applied some texture paint to the, to the base uh, if you check out some of the videos i'll go into my basing routine for this uh, but you can see now we've got some nice variation going on and it's looking pretty grimy and pretty nasty uh, but there's still a lot of work to do on this mini now we're going to move on to highlighting the skin and the flesh uh, like the creamy bleachy colors and for this we're using games workshop citadel's rakarth flesh um, and i'm just literally going around with a dry brush as you can see i've got a texture palette if you don't know you know this technique if you just tend to use like your normal kitchen roll and dry brush it that way don't do it that way i'll leave a link in the description below to uh 
Artis Opus. Uh, they've got a brilliant tutorial on how to dry brush correctly. You don't need one of these brushes, it does help, but any sort of dry brush. Uh, I tend to use the flat ones a lot. I've got a load of flat dry brushes and I use them. Um, so if you want to learn how to do that and dry brush as you should with this little spongy thing I've got at top, um, go and check that video out. But just literally work your way around all the flesh and if you want it to go a bit brighter, then you can use something like Flayed One Fresh, uh, Flayed One Flesh, not fresh, <laughs> uh, and add that to it as well if you want little areas to be a little bit brighter. Moving on to our carapace now, we've got Smoke Black and Ash Grey, and now all the carapace slash, you know, like these bony sections, we're going to add a uh, dry brush building up to that. And I also add a little bit of Baylor Brown, towards the end and dry brush that slightly in different areas to create a little bit of color variation. Now we're gonna jump straight into some uh, grimdark effects uh, for the mouth, because this beast of an animal has got a, a, a gruesome mouth, which I think needs a little bit of a special attention. The teeth, you can just paint these in white or any sort of bleach color, because most of them are gonna get blood all over them. <laughs> Um, basically, I wanted to spend a bit of time talking about this because it's such a big, beautiful mouth, which reminds me of, uh, you know, my ex-girlfriend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but one thing I did add um, to around the miniature were my recipe for wet effects. Um, it's not gloss varnish, however, it can be done with gloss varnish, so if you just wanted to make it look a bit wet, put some gloss varnish on it. However, I do have a recipe that makes it look a little bit better uh, in my eyes. Uh, this is going to be available for members only soon, and then obviously it'll be on uh, Patreon once I've got that set up. But we've got some different blood effects. Now, depending on what blood you want, you could just get a bit, get, it's nice to get a bit of variation on some blood. Now, if you've only got something like Blood for the Blood God, mix it with a bit of Agrax Earth Shade. And first of all, we're just going to stipple some of this uh, all over the mouth and we're just going to work his way around and just stipple bits on and then we're going to go into a like a splatter phase now if you don't know how to do the splats you want to get a little bit on a brush and just start literally flicking it with like a cocktail stick or some sort of rod and just start applying this to miniature there isn't much control with this uh, so just be aware of that where where you're flicking it but with this the more the better i uh, i assume um, and just work your way around and then obviously dip it into your other different colour reds and start doing that as well. Uh, now to get your final finishing touches, uh, we're going to add some Uhu glue. And this is relatively cheap glue, it's available in most hardware stores or hobby shops. Uh, and it's an absolute gold mine of a product if you're going to do stuff like this. Now, Uhu glue, um, apply it with like a cocktail stick or here yeah, I've just got an old airbrush needle. Um, it does dry pretty quick, so some people mix it with like the blood and stuff first. I don't because it dries a bit too fast. Now, if you've never used it before, it's a bit like I can't even explain it. It's like it looks like saliva because it's got a bit of a glossy, wet look to it. Um, but it does dry pretty quick, and you have to be pretty really quick with it, which is hence why I don't mix it. Um, but I apply my blood onto it after. Now, the reason I do that is two reasons. One because of the drying thing. And number two, I want to leave some that's clear so it looks like saliva uh, and like wet inside its mouth. And then obviously there's also some blood's gone onto there as well. And that's it for this tutorial. Uh, as you can see, the close-ups, uh, you know, like the prep work and stuff we've done, uh, it really does pay off towards the end. And like we did say at the beginning as well, I painted this pretty quick. So it's such a large miniature. Uh, with the techniques that we use, I were able to uh, paint this rather fast. Um, so again, thanks for watching this video, and a massive thanks to all my members, which will appear on screen now. And remember, if you want to uh, win this box set, if you want to win a fully painted Leviathan box set, make sure you are hitting that subscribe button. As at the end of these series, I have got a giveaway where I'm giving away, you know, like the full painted Leviathan box set, everything that you see on my YouTube. Um, so if you want to be in, in it to win it, make sure you hit that subscribe button to find out how you can get hold of it. Uh, again, a massive thank you. It really helped me out if you could hit that thumbs up button and it'll help me and share it on Instagram. Do whatever you need to do uh, to help me get this video out. So yeah, one last time, massive thanks from me and I'll catch you in my next video.